Welcome to the latest version of The Shipwright, a Blender add-on for 3D modellers, game developers and concept artists that automatically creates sci-fi shapes and parts for further editing or sculpting. This version comes with a host of new features, an easier installation process, a new user interface, greater customization, baking and exporting features and even the ability to add your own custom objects. I'll be overviewing each of these features in this video. Detailed documentation on each feature is linked in the description and please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any issues. The Shipwright uses a combination of other add-ons which come as part of the Shipwright bundle. The Shape Generator, the Plating Generator and the Hull Texture Node group. In Blender, go to Edit, Preferences and select the Add-ons tab. Install the following supplied zip files in order by clicking the Install button for each one. Remember, don't unzip them. First, there is the Plating Generator Greeble zip file for the Plating Generator. Then, add the Shape Generator zip file for the Shape Generator. Finally, add the Shipwright zip file. For each file, make sure the entry for the add-on is checked. Now, Load the shipwright.blend file to open the default setup and you'll be ready to go. First, switch to the rendered view by clicking on the button in the top right to see the default object in all its glory. Let's also save this as a new file so we can keep the default file clean. Make sure you have selected the shipwright object by left clicking on it. If you cannot see the side property tabs in the viewport, hit the N key. Click on the tab called Shipwright. With the object selected, you should see a set of parameters. The first parameter you see will be the master seed. Click the small circular icon next to it to change the number at random. When the seed changes, the Shipwright object should completely change. Let's dive a little deeper to see how the Shipwright works. To create interesting objects, the default setup uses a little design theory to scatter big, medium and small objects on top of one another. The add-on does this using something we've called levels, which is a little like layers in Photoshop or Krita. Here, the first level creates the bigger object. Then, the second level scatters extra medium-sized objects on top. And finally, the last level scatters even smaller objects. Each level has its own set of parameters, which are divided into two main groups. One set to control the shape of the objects, the other to control the plating effect applied to the shape. These parameters also control such things as mirroring, rotation and materials and are covered in detail in the documentation linked in the description. You can add more levels if you like, but this does add extra complexity. You also have a deformation lattice added to the object so you can deform the overall shape even more once you have found a seed value you like. Untick the refresh lattice option if you want to keep the deformation but change the overall shape. Baking and exporting. When you're happy with your shape and wish to either edit the object even further in Blender or export to another application, you have a number of options in the Join Smooth Bake tab. By default, all the separate objects are combined into one, but you can change this by toggling the Join Objects button. You'll see all the separate objects appear in the side Object Hierarchy panel. If we keep the Join Object button switched on, however, we can apply smoothing to the overall shape by clicking Apply Smoothing. This is useful if you wish to sculpt the overall object. It works by adding a remesh and smooth modifier to the object. You can increase the detail in the smoothing by decreasing the voxel size parameter. But do be careful, as the lower values increase the detail so much that it may cause Blender to crash. Do remember to save your work regularly. You can remove all the properties on the Shipwright object in two ways. You can either click the Remove Properties button which will delete all the Shipwright properties but keep any mirror and lattice modifiers. Alternatively, you can click Collapse Shipwright, which will completely remove all modifiers and leave you with a base object. There is also a Delete function, which will completely remove the Shipwright object from your scene. 
if you wish to assess many possible combinations of master seed, the iterator feature can use the camera in your scene to automatically render a range of shipwright master seed combinations to a directory of your choosing. Expand the iterator tab, select a seed range and specify a directory. Click the start button. Blender may look like it has paused, but it is actually processing in the background. Open up the directory you specified and you should see an image render for every seed you have specified in the range. You can always stop the process by removing the running.ack file in the directory, which will cause Blender to stop the process after it has rendered an image. Once you have seen an image you like, you can use the number in the file name to enter into the master seed parameter in Blender. You should see the same object appear in the scene. Custom objects. If you don't want to use the generated shapes, you can now specify your own custom objects or collections of objects from the scene. To demonstrate this, let's start a new scene completely. Delete the default cube. We can add a new shipwright object through Blender's traditional add menu. Let's also import an object. Here's a jet object we created earlier. Select the shipwright object and bring up the shipwright panel. In the levels tab, select the default level that appears and change the level type parameter to object. You can then select the jet from the drop down menu. Make sure the number of generated objects for this level is set to one. Let's name this level Jet. Now add a new level, which by default will add some generated objects on top of the jet. You can make these objects smaller by changing the relative scale parameter to something like 0.3. Now, cycling the master seed parameter, you'll see different combinations of overall shapes appear. You could alternatively use custom objects on this level as well either by selecting one custom object or a collection of them. That's it for now. Do delve into the documentation, which covers a lot more features than we have had time for here. If you have any questions or a feature request, don't hesitate to get in touch, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.